Hi everyone, this is QA Shahin and today I am really excited about this because we're finally going to start looking at Docker. We're going to look at what Docker is and why you would want to use it and at some point in this video series I'm going to tie this back into automation. Now this is something that I've been looking into a lot and I really think that this is an important topic for anyone to consider especially if you're in the kind of testing domain profession because this slowly does tie into DevOps based things. The more important thing about this is that at some point you'll be able to tie in your CI knowledge, your automation knowledge and then the knowledge you get from Docker. So without further ado, let's begin. Let's quickly review the agenda of this particular video. So in this video, we're going to look at what Docker is and we're going to look at why you should use it. So this first video is going to be a very subtle introduction to Docker itself. And it is from the second video onwards where we're actually trying to get our hands dirty. Now, really quickly, as part of my future videos from this video onwards, all of my videos will try to have a blog post posted to my blogging site the test room so what that means is from now on for any given video there will be a blog post and the blog post will most likely come out earlier than the video so for anyone really super who follows my channel you'll be able to follow it by looking at my blog post and it might be an easier platform for me to share my videos anyway if you wish to access this blog post then just hit the link here and you'll be able to go to it via that way if you want to. The link will be in the description below. So what is Docker? So Docker is an open source project and it's free. And in a single sentence, it allows you to containerize operating system. So what does that actually mean? It's very jargony, but what does it actually mean? What it means is you're able to basically spin out or deploy images or small boxes, so to speak, which contain operating systems, which can also contain applications installed on them. What that means is you have the ability to almost deploy a very very centralized very isolated system of applications in a very specific form in this case a container and then deploy that to whatever you want and wherever you want the advantage of doing such thing is that once you create that image and you like to deploy it as long as the platform that you're deploying it to is compatible then what that means is that completely isolates you away from being able to have the need to identify any form of dependencies. In simple terms, once you have that image, you can deploy it wherever you want. And it does reduce the complexity of having to maintain dependencies, having to maintain versions and so on. And we'll see this as the video series progresses. So in short, when we talk about these containerized systems, they are basically images that you are able to deploy. Docker has what's called a Docker Hub. A hub is almost the same as saying a GitHub repository. It's just a place where there are many images and you have the option of pulling these images. You have the option of creating your own image. There are many images to choose from. But the most important thing about Docker images is that they are not VMs. So let's talk about this a little bit more. So when we talk about a VM, there's obviously the architecture of a given VM. What that means is the VM is actually running on some kind of architecture. Now the VM could be different based on say something like VirtualBox or based on say something like VMware, so on. On top of the architecture, you then have the guest OS system. So this is whatever guest OS system is running. And then you have the apps on top of that. The sort of disadvantage you get with this is that 
sometimes when you want to say deploy one VM into some other place, sometimes because of VM compatibility or VM versioning, that doesn't always work. Um, and there is always the chance that a VM that works on your machine may not actually work on someone else's because of versioning, because of a number of different factors. Now, how is this taken into consideration for containers in a Docker system? So when we talk about Docker, a container in Docker is almost the same with the exception of the actual guest OS system. Instead of having the guest OS system, you basically have a Docker engine which acts as the guest OS system almost. And what that means is as long as any platform that wants to contain these images or containers, as long as it supports the Docker engine, then the idea is that it should be able to run it. So in simple terms, what that means is if anyone has Docker, they should be able to run your container without any issues. And when I say anyone, I'm not talking about anyone specifically or individually. I'm talking about a given machine that has Docker, a given cloud system that has Docker, so on. Now, the most important question, why should you even bother using Docker? What's the whole point of using Docker? Well, let's take a second to think about this because this is probably the most important question that you would have as part of this particular first video. Well, for starters, it is free. Now, when we think about automation in general, one of the first things that comes up once you have your automation tests up and running is to actually run it in some kind of continuous environment or continuous integration purpose. In other words, you want to run your tests as many times as you can in some environment that gives you results over time. So when we say you use something like Jenkins, or Bamboo or any other CI based environment, maybe even Team City. It's great if we can just simply run our test against a given environment with CI almost orchestrating the ordering and the execution of those tests. But let's just say that you're running your test against an actual environment. So I don't know, some staging environment, some internal beta environment, so on those environments might be subject to various things such as endpoints being up or being down, versions of various applications, so on. In other words, you don't actually control those environments. Those environments are subject to change by many people, by many teams, so on. If you had a Docker image to basically spin out those environments, and yes, it is entirely possible to get Docker to say, build some form of application then that runs an environment and the orchestration of that images that is built is something you can control then one thing you can use docker to do is to control the environment that your tests are running and when i say control i'm in full control you have the ability to bring this environment to life to sustain it and to even clean it down afterwards so this is one reason why docker can be very important Docker provides you with the tools and techniques to build these environments and then be able to run your test against that environment. Once your test finished, you also tear down the environment because you don't need it anymore. Now, again, something to consider is to think about automation for Docker as well. How can automation be linked to Docker? Well, it is entirely possible for you to create, say, an image that actually contains your tests. And that means your tests are now sort of in a very centralized area. They are sort of in almost a very package-like form. Let's just say you want to run your test against, for example, Firefox or maybe Chrome or maybe IE. It is possible for you to deploy an image that contains IE, deploy a different image that contains Chrome, deploy a different image that contains Firefox, and then deploy another image that contains your test. You can get your test to run against each of the first three environments with the three different versions of the browsers. Better yet, you can do this kind of stuff in parallel. So this is almost now slowly touching into the whole Selenium grid sort of environment where we're able to run tests against multiple different environments in parallel. Lastly, you can share your code. So instead of, say, providing someone with a link to a GitHub repository that contains your test, you can just give them a container that contains your test instead and just give them instructions on how they can use that to run 
against different environments. So these are some reasons which I personally think are very good reasons why you may want to consider learning Docker to enhance your knowledge when it comes to automation and also add as a supplement to your CI based knowledge. So what have we learned in this video? So in this particular video, we didn't really learn much other than a subtle introduction to what Docker is. We didn't go into heavy, heavy technical detail. It was very much more abstract. Um, I could have gone into a lot of techie detail, but I think to try to maintain some level of sanity for now, let's just try and understand what Docker is. And in the next video, we'll actually start to use it and we will start by installing it. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you in the next one.